What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjui here with uh, a long-awaited video about why I like this game, or more realistically, my love-hate relationship with this game. When I uh, criticize this game, people tend to ask, well, why are you playing it if you don't like it? No, 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 you're wrong. I love this game. I love the characters. I love the game modes. I love the raid. I love the release schedule and how frequently we get characters. Uh, what I hate is the decisions made by Fox Next, and um, I think if I show you a little bit what I mean, maybe a lot of you will find that you agree with me, even if you love this game and, and pr praise it to high heaven, or if you're constantly on Reddit angry at something. Uh, I think the middle ground is we all play this game because we enjoy it, uh, and we're, we're tolerating a lot of the decisions they're making because of how much we enjoy the game. So I think the first thing to talk about is it, it's it's Marvel, right? At the end of the day, we're all Marvel marks. Um, we all talk about when is so-and-so gonna be released? I can't wait for Moon Knight. I can't wait for Doom. I can't wait for, you know, whomever my favorite character is. Why are there not enough Spider-Man characters? And that just shows that the fandom is really driving home interest in this game. I wish we were in a situation where I could tell anyone who's even slightly interested in Marvel that like, oh no, this is literally the best version of a Marvel game you can play. We just, we're not there. It's a better game for newer players, uh, obviously, as they increase things like rewards and more characters become available in stores. Uh, it gives newer players, players who've been playing, you know, players who start today or players who've been playing for a couple months, more control over what they want to work on. But it, it, it hits a drought relatively quickly. Uh, players who've been beta or day one players like myself uh, and players who've been playing for about a year now are starting to to feel the, well, what now? Like, what am I supposed to do now? Um, and we'll, we'll just kind of go over the game modes and, and talk about that, too. So. I think to start off, one of the things that people tend to forget about or overlook is just how good the campaigns are. Uh, the campaigns, both the design campaigns and the the specialty campaigns that are released when they do a character event campaign, like the most recent one was Elsa. There's been plenty. They kept them going. Uh, they're amazing. They're really good ways of telling story for those of you who are interested in the story of this world. Uh, which I'll do a lore video, I guess, if anyone actually wants that. There is there is a story, and it's actually relatively good. It's kind of how you know Doom is coming, or how you could figure out, um, you know, whether a character like Apocalypse or or Sinister are are part of something. It, it, there's a really good story. Anyway, the campaigns are fun, you know, and that's kind of the the entry level content for the game. Like when you start playing the game, it's about how fast can you progress through the campaign nodes. You know, through the heroes and villains into Nexus, how well can you build a cosmic or a mystic team to accomplish these? And then how can you start farming the other characters? This is like the standard gotcha game, like MO, which is have a character campaign or have campaigns power power through them. And honestly, I think a lot of the fights have very good challenge points. Uh, I'm not gonna go so far back as heroes and villains, but I think that there were more than a couple of, of hangups in Nexus that the the nodes did feel challenging, and they were designed to. They were designed to be, you can't just walk through everything. You can either overpower it or use strategy. And if you were impatient, you know, you could spend money and overpower it by investing better, more and better into your characters. Either way, this was such a great part, but this is the, this is the leveling process. Usually, you get through at least most of Cosmic before you reach level cap. Uh, I mean, 75 is currently the level cap, but 65 was a level cap for a long time, and then 70. You should probably get through most of the cosmic because of how your progression builds. You start with your basic defenders teams and you work towards your guardians, and eventually, you know, you start working on additional characters. But by the time you get to the Mystic campaign, you probably have a really decent cosmic team, a really decent sorry, a really decent global team, and, and, and you're, you're building your roster 
wider so you can be more useful in specialty raids as they come up, etc., etc. So there are some challenges, you know, I'm not going to stay on it, but a lot of people tend to say that the Mystic 3-9 is, is like one of the hardest fights, which it is, but it's a challenge fight, and when you actually are able to accomplish it, it feels great. And that's something that's rewarding in gameplay. When you, like, if you see something that you can't just auto fight or walk through, that you have to use strategy, it, it's a very rewarding feeling. So I, I support that. And I think that they had a great job with these campaigns. I think that when they release the new campaigns, they, they make them fun and interactive. They give you a very large group pool of characters. So it's not just if you don't have these five specific characters, you can't win. Usually there's about eight to, to 12 characters you can choose from. It gives everyone an opportunity to to work towards them. And while the newer players don't have the, the luxury of being able to do the hard mode versions of the campaigns, the the established players kind of walk through them. And in the middle mid range players, not many, they don't have to invest too much to get there. Um, now, now on to the, the cons. We don't see these campaigns again. That, that like, why are, why are they just leaving content on the, on the cutting room floor? Like, oh, here's the, you know, here was the, the pyro event. I believe it had an event. We haven't seen that in a while. How many people would be so ecstatic to now see the pyro event for like a week just because th they are now capable of, you know, three starring all of the fights? The Falcon event, obviously the Minerva event. I don't have to go into that. I'm sure people are expecting me to say it. Like, why are they leaving already designed content in the garbage? They could have an event, a campaign. Like, there's no reason a character campaign event isn't always on and it's that kind of thing that, that that tilts me a little we can talk a little bit about how well they haven't released you know additional nexus nodes that they said the biggest problem here is that they show this right if they never showed this you would never have even expected them to release it but yeah what they're not releasing just nexus they're releasing more campaign events for every version of the game and they're going to probably be tied in with how you obtain ISO 8s most likely almost definitely willing to bet on it but like why haven't they released these yet well because they haven't figured out what to do so th they just need to be a little bit more active in campaigns because this is the content that most people talk about when they talk about content not characters characters aren't content character campaigns are content but like characters and blitz isn't content and when, no matter what anyone at fox next says no one's going to believe them like characters like things that you have to buy are not content it, it just doesn't work that way when you look at campaigns yes they could add more campaign nodes to it but another thing that's very simple is they can take all of the existing campaigns and i've said this for raids before they could just add a hard mode to every single fight at the cost of literally nothing. You know, every single one of these fights has a hard mode and all it happens is all of these numbers are doubled. Double the difficulty, double the hard mode. It, is that gonna matter for me with a seven star Captain Mar America? No, probably not, but that'll solve the gold problem, right? That'll solve a gold problem because when you start, when you can start doing hard mode stuff, and you can also change the stuff. You can, you have the content here just make the exact same fight, double the stats on the characters, and then release additional stuff. And it doesn't have to be for heroes and villains. It doesn't necessarily have to be for Nexus. You could do it with just Cosmic or Mystic, but hard modes are really relevant. You have, you know, all, like, basically an untapped pool of access, and they're just letting it die. And that's, that's my hatred of this. That's what bothers me the most is, I don't ever look at these anymore. I do this to test a new character. I go into Nexus when a new character comes out just to see like how they work uh, at like 30K or something. And none of these are challenging. But if I wanted to test the character on one of the harder fights, are they Mystic? Are they Cosmic? Nope. All right, well, I can't find out. I have to hope to see it in Blitz or um, Arena, maybe. I don't know. So campaigns are absolutely phenomenal parts of the game, but they, they just... They need to do more with it. And the fact that they're just letting it sit and not working on it 
or not telling us. That's the, one of the most important things. They need to make us know what to expect. They need a roadmap. They need something to tell us like, hey, listen, we are working on it. Like we haven't gotten anything on, on Cyclops yet, but we're not as mad. Like when is Cyclops coming out? They said eventually, right? They, they told us eventually, but they don't know. So we don't know. And we're, we're now waiting for it. We didn't know when U7 was gonna be released because it was months and then we got it and it's garbage. We'll get to that right next. Um, the next game mode that you know I absolutely love is Arena. Uh, I love everything it stands for. You can check right now, this is my Arena offense team and it's basically uh, Sinister, Phoenix, Ultron, and then two other random characters that I picked. These are the two I picked. Yesterday I was at like 200, today I'm at 58 because that's just what I was able to do because Arena is very fun in its in its vacuum because it's, it's a really great way to see how strong you are compared to other players or see how much strategy you can employ to defeat someone's red star luck or whatever. It, Arena is a great game mode. I, I have no problems with how Arena works. Um, but when we get to the actual problems with Arena, it's twofold. One, the rewards, again, a little bit less than I'd imagine they should be. A lot of that is because I think they think cores are worth more than the community believes they're worth. But, like, like I don't think top showing up top in Arena doesn't really give you that much. Like, maybe top 10 is giving you a pretty solid core investment uh, or, or, or core income, but cores don't really get used often like i don't know anybody who's intentionally buying gold orbs with cores or anything who's not spending money to do it anyway so i know plenty of people especially a lot of free-to-play players who like save their cores up till they have nine thousand. they're like what do i spend them on i'm like I, I don't know garbage offers at the bottom of a store because you have nothing to do wait for a campaign and start refreshing nodes you know make sure you you target farm a character better like Cores don't really have a lot of turnover because we all agree that 450 cores isn't worth a gold orb or whatever. So I think they could probably up the rewards a little bit, but they need to make sure everyone can win an arena, right? You'll see a lot of videos that are like, is Coulson the best off arena character? Like these people are talking about offense. I can change most of the characters here and win every fight. The team that I know wins almost every fight is Phoenix, Ultron, uh, Loki, Captain Marvel, and Falcon. Every fight. I, I do not lose. I do, I do not lose with a lot of fights. At least Sinister makes them fun. So I'm not worried about how, how hard it is to beat people in Arena. I'm worried about actually being able to have a defense that people can't beat that's not gated behind Red Star Orbs. So right now, there's a little bit of, a, of an issue in Arena, and it's, it, it's called the Phoenix paradox which is the more if you have phoenix you're going to do great in arena except for you know anyone else who has phoenix is also going to do great with arena so if everyone is doing great in arena what's making you better and it's not even strategy anymore because there's no difference like phoenix is the cheat code you either know how to beat her and then you don't worry about it or you don't know how to beat her or you got really lucky and you have seven red stars on colossus and six red stars on I don't know, Psylocke or something, and all of a sudden that team just can't be beaten, and you're just like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like they're, they're just too much more power than I have skill or strategy, and I can't reliably get red stars. So the problems with Arena come down to, once again, red stars and, and just not being able to reliably get any access anywhere. But it doesn't... It, it's a very small thing because Arenas are supposed to shift, but prior to Phoenix, Arena meta was... Who in your shard has Fury? Okay, well, that's the team that's winning. All right, well, who has Star-Lord? All right, tech team is winning. Oh, well, who got Magneto? All right, the Magneto team is winning. And then that Magneto team held, like, when you got Magneto, the next step up was Ultron, right? Oh, they have Ultron? All right, now they're gonna be among the top guys. And then the people who don't have Ultron, they're just, they be able to beat them, but they can't hold on defense because Ultron same thing. now it's Phoenix and now everyone has Phoenix for everyone who has Phoenix like in my shard I think it's like the top 300 players have Phoenix so like the top 300 is just how many times do you want to attack I could attack probably all the way up to one I've done it previously 
by spending cores, but like, what does that do to show off that I'm number one? Great. It, it, it just takes away a lot of the co competitive feeling of the game when there's actually no strategy involved, when it just shows off, you know, especially for a day one player and an early arena shard. Oh, who spent the most money of all the people that have been playing for a year and a half? Okay, they win. Like, eh, I don't know. But so that's my problems with the arena. But I do enjoy the idea of the strategy. The next game mode, I, I did a video on it, but it's raids. Honestly, I think raids are, are, are better in this game than in any other game that applies raids. I like I like the idea that there are, there's not just one fight or one fight that everyone ch tunnels into, but it's multiple different kinds of fights so you can take advantage of of, of different rosters and different... Like not everyone has to build the exact same thing, uh, especially with the, the specialty raids. When you have Gamma, like we, we spend a lot of time in my alliance, determining who's best suited for which lanes in the alpha, the beta, and the gamma, uh, and who has the power to, to kind of push through. And for the weaker players, or the players who don't have as much invested in their cosmic characters, you know, they definitely have a global team or a city team, so they're okay with the alpha raid. But we'll find a place for them, and that, that's kind of fun. And even going so far, I think U5 was the first point when it wasn't just put five characters on a team and fight the fights. I think U5 was the first point where there needed to be a little bit of strategy. Obviously U6 for the last nine months was the answer to the strategy problem. And, and that made sense too. So I'm okay with that. And, and U7 came out and I, I my biggest criticism of U7 is not gonna be the challenging. I love the challenge. I love the fact that right now you can't just take the best five characters and be like, this is it, this is the raid team. Like, like it doesn't work because you have to figure out something else. Uh, and obviously the same thing's gonna happen that always happens. Anyone who's willing to spend is going to spend to progress further through the, they're gonna spend the, your, the charges, they're gonna buy those packs that give them refreshes. They're going to spend to progress further. And that's okay, what the, what, that's cool. But the average player is gonna have a little bit of a hard time pushing through and, and that's also okay because that just means that you need time to, to build out certain parts of your roster or to wait till someone figures something out that's really a good strategy or just until your entire alliance is capable of testing and constantly getting 30%. My, my issue with raids, as the previous video discussed, is that at, I don't remember the last time, I know it existed, but I don't remember the last time a raid was worth the effort it puts in like the rewards are worth it. it. It just wasn't. It never was. It never like probably eight months ago. Probably the, uh, whatever was before the last Black Panther raid. Maybe like the Miles raid, right? When the Gamma came out and you could you could get like Juggernaut with it. Prior to the point when they were releasing orbs, it, it, like the amount of effort I have to put into U seven as as a player for my alliance is not worth what I get back for 30 or 60 or even 100%, let alone doing it every day. It's, it's, it's not worth it. And then for gammas, and like, what what am I getting for 100 percenting? I'm getting an orange elite orb, which should have gone the way of the dodo bird a while ago. Those do not need to exist anymore. There is no reason why there's an orange elite orb and an orange, uh, you know, an orange regular raid orb like th those need to be combined into one orb called the orange raid orb and it has to give the same thing the purple gear raid orb does but in orange it has to happen like it, it's already late so anytime longer than this video it takes to come out it's just going to be later of a thing that should have to occur anyway and this isn't free gear this is just how you're supposed to keep the entire community engaged in a game that you're supposed to be grinding. This is supposed to be a grind game. I'm supposed to put effort in and be rewarded for the more effort I put in. I'm not supposed to put more effort in and get less value. And I don't even want to talk about raid season points because raid season points aren't a reward. They're a responsibility. They're a requirement. They're a burden. So increasing the amount of raid season points in a raid does not make that raid worth more. It, like for to the players it just makes them have to do it or else they're losing out on the raid season you can lower every raid node could have the exact same reward structure every raid like there's an, they can all every raid node you do could be worth one point 
and it won't make a difference as far as raid season rewards are concerned. Because it's like, why are you being rewarded for being able to accomplish the hardest version of a content? That doesn't make sense. It should just be how quickly you can accomplish all of the content. And the reward you get as a player for doing harder content should be that you get more rewards. But that's my opinion, and I'm totally fine with people who have a different version of it, but that's the idea. When it comes to these raids, the rewards are garbage, and there needs to be a little bit less required activity from your alliance. As of right now, so here's the alpha, it's about to end for us. We need all 24 people in it, right? To get our 60%. We stop at 60. We, you know, we'll do extra attacks if we have the energy, but we stop at 60. It's just not worth it. Pushing that extra 40% just doesn't give us enough. We don't care. Our raid season, who cares? Whatever. What is the purpose of it? Like, why? Why do I have to jump into a raid and then all of a sudden, because someone in my alliance didn't jump in until the last second, we didn't 100%. Why are these, why are there eight? Why is eight? Why not six? Why can't every raid be with, with efficient? Like if you check out the lanes, you get, I think you get a total of 12 raid energy if you're perfect. Like if you start attacking the second a war fight, a uh, raid starts and then go through up. Like they're not set up right now that unless every person is perfectly in sync, there is going to be overlap and you won't be able to. So right now I can attack these last five nodes, right? Which will slow me down for my next raid. I'm not, that's why we're not doing it. It's not worth it. I might as well just hit the same point next time. The, there needs to be a way where like six people can, six people in each strike team should be able to defeat the raid without spending cores. Every other person who's involved in the raid should be able to to contribute. That's what's keeping alliances back a little bit. And we'll get into the alliances when I talk about that. But like, there's just a lot of problems with raids, but it's not the gameplay of the raid. It's not the challenge of the raid. It's not even the fact that you your alliance does it. It's the rewards are never worth it. And the amount of time invested in that game makes this more difficult to do you don't get to just log in your game spend your energy and check something everyone check the stores you have to log in your game and then spend your campaign energy and then your raid energy and then see if there's a war fight etc etc um so that's my love that's my love hate with raids like great game mode terrible rewards and then we have war as you can see right now we're slightly behind it doesn't make a difference like we're, we're slightly behind by the by a room you know like we'll be fine but it's it's a great game mode it lets you use a lot of your roster it lets you strategize with your alliance it lets you set up defenses that can be difficult for opponents to beat and that's the end of the good things about war that's it it's a fun game mode potentially the rewards have gotten better since the release of uh, leagues so that's great. But the store still has garbage economy. Like any of the character shards in that war store is useless. It still happens too often. For us, wars are not won in the opening hour or two of war anymore. Wars are won no matter what. A war ends for us um, 8 a.m. the next morning. So my war starts at what? 2? 2, 2 p.m. now with daylight savings. So. 7 p.m. 7 a.m. the next morning, uh, my war is done. Doesn't matter what happened. Didn't matter how strong we were at the beginning. None, none of it matters. That war is that we either we've either won or we've lost at 7 a.m. That's it. Like, and that's not because we spent money, and that's not because we bought energy. It, it's just because that's just how war breaks. It's not the opening aggression that matters. It's what happens in the middle and and how efficient the players are. Like, how many times did you lose a fight? And how many times did you go back in? Like, you know, like... Too much. War's too much. Either, you know, do it two times a week, or one time a week, and then change kind of how the strategy of war works. I think it's... You've gone too far into war to make any major changes to the gameplay mechanic. So at this point, it just needs to be less frequent. The only answer is less frequency. Or, don't let people buy war attacks that's the other option just 
You get you get what you get. Like you could buy a war attack, but it doesn't change the total. That's the like that would be something that's huge. Like you could only attack, you could only get eight victories in war kind of thing. Or, or, or nine victories in war. So you could buy as many attacks, but once you've hit your ninth victory, you're done. Because there's a cap to boosts for some reason. So like, wh like why? I get it, MVP is a thing, I guess, for some people who want to feel good about themselves. But th if you want to make it truly competitive, you need to change two very, very facets. One is how people interact with war or how frequently people have to interact with war. And two, and this is something that absolutely blows my mind that it hasn't happened yet. Why is it that when I win a war, I get my alliance's TCP in reward? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. When I defeat somebody, I need to get their TCP as a reward because just how all competitive MMR works, if I beat someone harder than me, I get more points. If I get someone higher ranked than me, I get more points. If I beat someone lower ranked than me, I get less points. That's how war should pay out. If you're a 50 million TCP alliance and you beat up on a 30 million TCP alliance, you don't get an extra 5,000 points. You get an extra 3,000. That's what's fair. That's what makes sense. That's how you keep things competitive. You don't let people with the highest power alliance beat up on alliances that are 20, 30, 50 million points lower. And I know that sounds crazy, but like it's happened. We talked about alliance swapping before. You don't let that happen. You you let people get the rewards for the effort their victory ca caused them. This way, you have actual competition, so somebody that's constantly winning in a war that they're punching up is getting more points than anyone who's ever punching down. And if that means that your alliance, who is always punching down, has a problem, then it's time to change alliances or switch up your alliance structure, right? Because that's what some people are willing to switch up their alliance structure for war when they swap rooms so they can fight against people who are like, 20 million points less than them, but oh no, if we have to swap our alliance power structure for something else, that might cause a problem. No, I'm not accepting it. Like war, war rewarding, not even just the rewards, the reward, the rewarding that they give you is not worth it. So yeah, I love the idea of war and the implementation of war has been consistently disappointing the entire time. Dark Dimension is great, no notes. Uh, Dark Dimension was absolutely phenomenal, and they made it better when they let you go back and get uh, extra credits, gold, and, and mega orbs for completing it. I look forward to the next Dark Dimension where Doom is going to be present. I'm super excited about that. No notes. Dark Dimension was one of the best game modes. Very rewarding at the end of it. Was a very at the time when I did it, I was I think the thousand and twenty sixth person to unlock Ultron. Like it was a deal. And even now, when people are telling me they're like the thirty third. You know, 33,000 people have unlocked Ultron. I'm like, 33,512. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. Because they still feel like, finally, I got Ultron. Ultron was a true endgame masterpiece. They need to replace that when, when, when Doom comes out. That'll be it. But, man, Ultron really, like, made the game feel good. So there are no notes for Dark Dimension. Uh, it's... Maybe when it came out, there was an issue. But as of right now, it, it, it's one of the few things they've done perfectly. Moving on. I love Blitz. Uh, Blitz is the standard tower mode of this game where you're supposed to be able to just use teams and progress up. I love Blitz. I love the idea of Blitz. I love the idea of building teams for Blitz. I love every part of Blitz. The improvements are go the, that they plan. The previous improvements did not improve Blitz. And anyone who says they are is lying to you or isn't isn't affected in a way most people are like they're they're just not. I think like probably about four percent of the community is like, no, Blitz is way better. And then everyone else is like, yeah, but it feels worse. And I don't care if it's actually better. The second something feels bad, it is bad. Like if it feels terrible to the people who are playing your game and paying you money, you have to address that. You don't try to convince them that they're wrong because then they stop playing the game and then the game dies. And that's not what we want. We want you to listen to your community, both content creators and Fox Next. So the, the changes to the reward structure are supposedly they're gonna increase the top 1500 to top 2000, or they might have already done it based on when this video comes out. Then they're going to add one and two, three to six and seven to 10 or whatever. And those are supposedly gonna be about five shards under. So like if top 12, 2000 is still gonna be the 85, and then it'll be like, 
like 75 or 70 and then you're, you're not going to miss by that much and feel that bad which is great which is a great change i also have mentioned i've heard that they're going to now add rewards uh to just completing a blitz like every blitz fight is going to generate a reward and that's also great that's also huge i i wish that happens i hope that happens because the best case scenario is it's a blitz orb for the character you're currently blitzing for right like that's great and then the worst case scenario is like it's a gold orb or a red star orb uh technically it could be the absolute abysmal case scenario where they go like here's training orbs right you wanted more training orb frags or they could make it a random rotating group of frags that would obviously be the worst case scenario because no one wants that yes it would be better but better by the lowest possible percentage which is the exact red star rework they did so blitz absolutely a fun game mode um in, in in practice uh it has gotten progressively worse every time they've made a change to it when they when we finally figured out like oh man i'm tired of fighting defenders i hate you guys for saying that because all you had to do was beat teams was build teams that beat the defenders and we built like 14 of them and like my stream and i we built 14 teams so all we had 14 teams that beat the defenders in 8-3 that's it all you were hunting defenders it didn't matter that you weren't using a, a perfect comp uh, of characters because it didn't matter because all you had to do was find one of the five defenders fights you had. Now, I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of problems with Blitz. They keep saying that they're going to improve it. We'll see. But overall, the entire reward structure of Blitz is terrible. Re Blitz, in my opinion, Blitz should be based on your arena shard. And if they're going to keep... No. If they're going to keep the top... Per numbered percentage one two three up to two thousand top two thousand players it needs to be on your arena shard like period it, like that's the only way to do it and then the rewards don't have to be as ridiculous because there's less people fighting for all of them followed up with if they're going to keep what's the way it is right now that all has to go maybe you can keep top five because that's a cool metric but everything else just has to be one one to two three like period sorry you need to give more shards out top one if you come in first place in a blitz considering the amount of players that are in this game and the amount of players in the future that could be in this game first place in a blitz should be a seven star character just period i don't know why anyone thinks it shouldn't i don't know why anyone thinks it's acceptable that it isn't when you come in first place that's it you should that's the seven congratulations here's your seven star your reward for blitzing and scoring 46 million points or whatever the last high blitz was i think it was like 40 something like that's or 41 i think when pipster hit it like that's that's the rule congratulations here's a seven star like period that like i don't understand why it's you get what is it 395 that's that's just about a five star character for completing that blitz like even that i don't even mind that I mind the amount of people that are getting it. So like I said, if you want to drop it down to Arena Shard and give everyone a five-star version of a character, that's fine for first place. That's a great that's a great trade because it's a smaller competitive pool, and I think it's fine. But like, if you're telling me I have to play against 500,000, however many people you lie and tell are playing this game, a million, you're lying. It's 500,000 at best. Like If you're telling me I have to be the number one player out of 500,000 in a Blitz, which is just I didn't sleep to hit like 40 million points, and I'm getting a five-star version of a character, like, no, it's not worth my time. I don't think it's worth anyone's time. I think if you do it, you're doing it to send a message. That's it. So that's that's the Blitz. And then, I, what, Red Stars, man? Like, the only positive thing about Red Stars is that they technically, by any stretch of the imagination, are, are progression. They're the very loosest version, word of progression. They make your character stronger. You have no control over them. You can't farm them. We don't get it. There's no method in which we can get promotion credits. We can't farm promotion credits. Like that's a fact. We cannot farm promotion credits. I can't even farm the red star orb fragments to get to open red star orbs to get elite force uh, credits to get those. If I was farming red star orbs and then I chose to change them from elite four credits to one promotion credit, maybe we're not. We're given a pitiance of of a of red star fragments of red star orbs a week we're giving access to those by playing the game one day a week but don't worry you can spend 50 dollars and get 14 orbs congratulations to everyone who did i hope your red star walk was great truly 
to everyone else in the game who's either not falling for that trap or just doesn't have $50 to spend on 14 maybe chances uh, like no it's garbage it's not gonna happen so don't worry guys because I'm telling you right now red stars will be a lot easier to obtain when ISO 8s come out and as a rule if you're one of the people who are going to say thank you Fox next when they make red stars finally better I I prefer you stop playing this game because they should have fixed red stars the first time they fixed red stars and they didn't they should have fixed red stars any time from then to now and they haven't so anything they do is is, is a day late and a dollar short shy of giving us shy of removing all of the old elite specialty bundles and just having an orb that guarantees a seven red star that's the only thing they could do and i'd be like dope and they're not going to do that because that's i wouldn't do that because it's stupid there's no amount like they can give us all the only thing they can give us that makes it reasonable is 100 red stars a week i know that sounds crazy and like i'm being like hyperbolic but no 100 red star orbs a week i'm sorry that's it it's the only thing the only thing that only way they can make it feel like oh wow no i'm actually progressing is that they can make you farm promotion credits that's the huge up that i expect to see in the next couple of weeks by the time iso 8s come out usually either either literally end of the year or if they're smart patch 4.0 which is what i assume patch 4.0 when the api comes out but anyway red stars horrible implementation horrible to this day creating a very unfair advantage not even allowing you to make a decision regarding well, I got a high red star, so like clearly I'm going to be fine. Yeah, but it was on Hydra Armored Guard, and I don't need a character that one day will be reworked to be good. I need a character that will help me play the game today. This is not... Like, the game is a marathon, but like, I still got to play every day, so I need my running shoes now. I don't need them three years from now. And, and that's, that's it. So like, overall, if I had to like sum it up, my love of this game is that it is very engaging gameplay with really well-designed characters and very fun game modes. The, like, I don't think anyone would disagree with those core statements. I think that once you get to the reason I hate this game and the reason Fox Next boils my blood on a daily basis is they are consistently making decisions that show a, a dramatic disregard or disrespect for their player base. Seton said it best. Their entire every decision they've made, whether it's because of this, is irrelevant. Every decision they've made feels like they are trying to milk the whales. It it does. And they've made changes. And sure, here's the dollar ninety nine forty five character offer. That's not milking the whales. No, no, one character offer, a paradigm shift does not make. Like you have to change what is. You need to make offers that are reasonable for the community. You have to stop selling fifty character shard offers for for thirty dollars because a hundred character shards is not worth fifty dollars, let alone sixty dollars of any character in the game. Don't do that. Stop selling Miasma for $4.99, you garbage people. And if you don't see why that's a problem, stop by my stream and I'll educate you. Like, stop being garbage, Fox Next. Just take, stop treating your currency as if it actually has value to you among a part of the community beyond the top 0.5% of spenders in the game. 0.2%. They're gonna keep spending. But they're going to get pissed way faster than the rest of the game is. And you know who's going to be left when the whales leave? You know who's going to be left when they bench you over a table? It's going to be all the free-to-play players and all of the like casual spenders who are like, yeah, the whales are gone. Now it's going to be a fun game. And you're going to be... You're going to be flipping out. Because you're not making any money anymore. I already know you're coming in under this year. I think everyone does. Anyone who knows how to Google search earnings knows that you're not making as much money as you made last year but why is it because the children are wrong or is it because you're listening to the wrong people anyway thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoy this game as much as i do if you do comment i i want you to know like i am 
mean and harsh, but I love this game and I want to know about you guys too. So comment. Uh, I'm supposed to say like and subscribe, but I don't want to. So don't. I don't care. Do what you want. You're your own person. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.